What is up everybody? Welcome back to the second episode of the platformer tutorial. Today we will add one of the most important features to a game. Inputs. Cause imagine playing a game without any inputs. Yeah, that would be a very boring movie. Anywho, the goal of today is with our mouse and keyboard move the rectangle we drew in our first episode. First we will add the inputs and just check if they work and the next step would be to move the rectangle we drew. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We're just getting started with this tutorial and you don't want to miss the rest of it. Alright, let's begin. Before we do anything, let's take a look at how it looks right now, how we left it in the last tutorial. It's just a filled rectangle in the middle and uh, when we start it, it starts up in the top left, so we want it to start in the center of the screen. So we need to make one more command inside our game window, which is jframe dot set location relative to null. So what we're telling jframe here is simply spawn the window in the center of our screen. So if you run the game, it's spawned in the center. Simple as that. And now we can close down our game window and go to our game panel because it's inside our game panel that we will add our inputs. So in our game panel constructor, we're gonna type out add key listener. And to add some type of key listener, you usually add some text like new key listener enter and it should generate a lot of code for you but as you can see right away this is gonna get very messy because we're gonna add the mouse li listener and also the mouse motion listeners one is gonna take care of clicks and the other one is gonna look for drags and movements etc etc so we need some smart way of handling this and we're gonna go to our source folder right click and create a package just for our inputs. So inputs, we're gonna call it and finish. And inside this input, we're gonna add three classes, but let's just begin with our keyboard inputs right now. So we're gonna name this class key, keyboard inputs, nothing special. And inside this class, we're just gonna drag it to the right so we can see. And in this class, we're gonna implement all of these classes. So we're gonna type out implements if i can spell implements key listener which is an interface i've come to get to in a second we're just gonna add unimplement the method the difference between extends and implements is you extend a class but you implement a interface and you can only extend one class but you can implement more than one interface. And this interface is kind of a class, but it only has a lot of methods. It doesn't really have any code in it. It's just so that whenever you implement this interface, that makes sure that you get all the methods that's required for this function that you're now trying to implement. In this case, listening to keyboard inputs. As long as we are implementing key listener in keyboard inputs, we can now remove all of this code in gay panel in game panel and just place new keyboard inputs because keyboard inputs extends key listener. So now we have access to key typed, key released and key pressed in our own class. And this is much better option than to have everything inside our game panel constructor. And just to check whether or not the input works, Inside our key pressed, we remove this auto generated comments and type system.out.println and then a key is pressed. And then we can check specific keys and etc. But let's see if we run the game now and we press something on the keyboard. Nothing is happening. Why is that? And that's because we forgot to add one line of code which requests the input focus to a specific component. We do have inputs added to JPanel, or in this case, GamePanel, but we never tell that we want the input focus to be to the JPanel. So whenever we give any inputs to our game, it does not know where to go. So we need to go to our game class right here. And right after we initialize game window, 
and give game panel to game window, we say game panel dot request focus. And if we take a look at the documentation, we can see that request that this component gets input focus, which is what we want. And now after we give game panel the input focus, let's try it again. So now we're inside the game and we press something. A key is pressed, which is perfect. So the input from our keyboard is working. What we want to do now is to try and see if we can specify what key is being pressed. So let's go back to our keyboard inputs. And in here we can remove the a key is pressed code. We just wanted to see if it worked at all. And in here we will add a switch and we will test whatever e dot get key code. And we will check whether or not it's a key event dot underline a. We will check it's an a. We will also check for, let's just copy this. E A S D so S D W and actually it's supposed to be on the top of us like so that looks better and we need to add breaks for each all right so in case it's a W we simply say system dot out dot print line it's W and we can copy this one to D. So let's give it a try one more time. I pressed A, S and I press D and I press W. And if I press any other key, it doesn't do anything because we don't have any of those checks. So now we can actually control our game up, left, down and right. So. But let's leave that for now and go back to our game panel where we added a key listener and add the mouse inputs. And I think I mentioned it, but when we add mouse inputs, there are actually two kinds. So we can just add mouse and see what we get. We got a mouse listener, which is going to take care of clicks and so on. And the second one is motion listener, which is looking for, well, motions. When you're dragging the mouse, when you are moving the mouse, etc. And then there is mouse we listener. We're not going to use that. So let's begin with mouse listener. And just like we did with the keyboard inputs, we added a class that's going to handle all the keyboard inputs. Let's do the same for our mouse listener. So right click inputs, new class, mouse inputs. And we can only extend one class, but we can implement more than one interface. So implements mouse listener is the first one. And the second one is mouse motion listener. Let's actually close down that one. And we're getting an error. So add unimplemented methods. And now we're going to get a lot of methods. So we have Mouse dragged, moved, clicked, pressed, released, entered, and exit. So let's see if uh, we can get some events going when we are moving the mouse and clicking the mouse. Let's just add one of those very useful system.out. And I had it in control V, but this is going to be mouse move. And for clicked, mouse clicked. So let's go back to our, or rather, let's drag this one to the right now so we can see it. And in here, in our game panel, let's just add it. So a new mouse input. And for our add mouse motion listener, we add the same mouse inputs, but now I realize that we need an object, otherwise we're adding two different mouse inputs. So at the top here for our game panel, we can add a private mouse inputs, mouse inputs. And then we take this mouse inputs and pass it inside here. Like so. And we can pass in the same class in both of them because the class extends both the mouse listener and the mouse motion listener. 
But before we start, I just realized that maybe, just maybe, we need to initialize the class too. So new mouse inputs. Otherwise, we're going to get some errors and yeah, we don't need that. But I think everything else is set. So let's see if we can get mouse moved and mouse clicked. Mouse moved is working. How about mouse clicked? And it does. Perfect. So mouse moved and mouse clicked works. What happens if I click once? Now I'm holding it down and dragging the mouse. That's because we are dragging the mouse, so we're not moving the mouse. Or rather, we are inside mouse dragged and not mouse moved. But yeah, it looks like everything is working. So with these inputs now, we can actually start to connect them with our rectangle so let's get that going and there's a few ways we can do this but let's just begin by adding a variable for each of the directions so one for x and one for y and whenever we press a button one of those values increase or decrease depending if we go left right up or down so for x we're just going to call it plus x delta and for y it's plus y delta and up here, we just add those two, private int x delta equals zero and y delta equals zero. And we need some way of increasing or decreasing these values. And one way of changing these two values from our keyboard inputs is to add first a constructor, public keyboard inputs. And this constructor will take in a game panel, game panel, and we add that up here as a global variable. And then we just say that this game panel equals game panel. So now we have the game panel access inside our keyboard inputs. And whenever we press a W, A and so on, we change some type of value inside the game panel class. But first we need to pass the game panel into our keyboard input. So we just say this. And let's add some method here. Public void change x delta. And we simply ask for a int value and then this dot x delta plus equals value and we do this for y as well so public void change y delta int value this dot y delta plus equals value so now we can increase or decrease the x delta and y delta now we just need to call these two methods from our keyboard inputs so for w we're going up, so that would be game panel dot change y delta, and we're going up, so that's minus say five, five pixels. And if we are going a, that's down, so that's increase, so plus five. And for s, it's left game panel dot change x delta. So left is negative five. And the last one for D, which is to the right. So that's just five and it shouldn't be plus five. It should just be five like so. So if this is working, then whenever we plus press one of these buttons, we apply a change to X delta or Y delta. So let's give it a try. So it's working. So let's click W. Nothing is happening. Well, it is happening. We are just simply not seeing it. And that's because we only painted this surface once. There is no game loop that is currently repainting or redrawing the surface. It's just, we just told it to draw this rectangle, then done. It's not been told to repaint the surface with the new values. So we need to fix that. And we're gonna use something called repaint. Now. Repaint we will get into more later, but it simply does exactly what it's called repaint. 
So whenever we call the method repaint, think of it as we're calling paint component. We're saying, go back to paint component, look at the values and draw everything again with the new values. So whenever we call repaint, we're actually calling paint component. That way we can have it look like it's moving. So whenever we are calling change X delta, we say repaint. And whenever we are changing the Y delta as well, we are also calling repaint. Let's take a look if it's working now. Mouse input is still working. So let's click W up. Yeah, the square is moving. And if you click A, we are changing something wrong. That's my bad, my bad. A is to the left, so it's those two should change. That is my bad. W is up, A is left, S is down, and D is to the right. Perfect. So our rectangle is responding to our keyboard inputs. Beautiful. So what we want to do now is to apply this same function to our mouse mode. So let's close down keyboard inputs and go to our mouse inputs. And the first thing we will add is the constructor. So public mouse inputs. And we will add a private game panel. Game panel. And in here we say game panel game panel and then we say this dot game panel equals game panel and of course we need to import the class because it's inside an other package now we can go back to our game panel and add this to our mouse inputs and now we can add a method that says at this position we're gonna draw the rectangle so public void set rect position and this will take in two values we have the int x and int y because when we click the mouse we get a x and y position then we simply say that this dot x delta is equal to x this dot y delta is equal to y but that will maybe look a little bit weird since we have 100 plus the position we're pressing so let's just remove this 100 and go up to the top and add 100 here as a default value. So now whenever we say set rect position, we are applying the new values to x delta and y delta and then we draw it, but we need that repaint for it to work. So we need a repaint there as well. And we can add it to our mouse mode. Let's do that. Game panel dot set rect pos and we get the x and y from e dot get x and e dot get y so whenever we now move the mouse we're going to be able to move the rectangle to our mouse position so let's give that a try shall we look it's running pretty smoothly as well but i can still use the keyboard if i'm letting go of my mouse but as soon as I move the mouse just a tiny bit, it follows along. Perfect. So now we have our keyboard inputs able to move the rectangle and also our mouse inputs able to move the rectangle. And that, my friends, are actually all we need to do in this episode. We added inputs and we can now control the rectangle, not only with our mouse inputs, but also with our keyboard inputs. So that's really cool. So these two classes that we added today, keyboard inputs and mouse inputs, will be the basics to control everything inside the game. Every menu button and move the player around and all that fun stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This tutorial has just begun and there's plenty more episodes to come. So you don't want to miss that. And if you want to support me, there's a link in the description below to my Buy Me A Coffee page, which is like Patreon, but without the high fees. And again, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode as well. Cheers, guys.